K Water is a public company specialized in water resources management. We provide various international water education programs for the developing countries to solve water related issues all around the world. Today, we present an overview of water treatment for tap water production, as well as conventional water treatment processes such as mixing, coagulation, sedimentation, filtration, and disinfection. Water quality refers to the physical, chemical, and biological characteristics of water that contains impurities. Pure water consists of hydrogen and oxygen. But the natural water used for water supply also contains a lot of impurities with complex composition. The rainwater contains sodium, calcium, magnesium, potassium, etc. The groundwater includes silicic acid, bicarbonate, iron, and manganese. And the rivers and lakes have clay, germs, and organisms. Even the clear sea water has about 35 grams of salt per kilogram. In addition, a lot of organisms and heavy metals are found in contaminated water. In today's society, the types and quantities of aquatic pollutants are growing as we constantly create and use modern products with new chemicals. As it is hard to use raw water, a technical purification needs to properly eliminate impurities and supply clean tap water. Water treatment is a specialized process to reduce the difference between the raw water quality and the required tap water quality. The water treatment consists of combining various physical and chemical processes depending on the quality of raw water and the content of various impurities. If the raw water quality is poor or the required water quality standards are high, high treatment costs and advanced technology are required. Applicable water treatment techniques such as sediment, floating, filtration, absorption, etc. can be determined by the size and concentration of target impurities such as suspended solids, viruses, and bacteria and ionic substances. In general, the water treatment process can be customized by combining effective treatment technology to achieve the desired water quality, such as adding chlorine. At this time, it is important to share the tasks among unit processes to ensure efficient water treatment. Slow filtration, rapid filtration, and membrane filtration are mostly used for removing insoluble impurities. And when soluble components such as ionic materials cannot be removed sufficiently, we can use the advanced water treatment methods like ozonization and absorption of activated carbon. The conventional water treatment focuses on the elimination of insoluble turbid matters such as particles and pathogenic microorganisms. Unit processes include rapid mixing, coagulation and flocculation, sedimentation, filtration and disinfection. And the facilities consist of a mixing basin, coagulation and flocculation basin, sedimentation basin, filtration basin, and clear well. Mixing and coagulation are the processes of injecting and mixing coagulants into raw water containing colloidal particles. At this time, the colloids aggregate to form flux that can be easily separated from the water. A turbid matter with a diameter of 1 micrometer or less cannot be removed through gravity, sedimentation, or filtration. Because colloidal materials with a diameter of 1 micrometer or less have an extremely large surface area per unit and are mostly negatively charged, therefore, it is difficult to directly apply gravity sedimentation or filtration method. Without coagulation, materials even cannot be filtered due to repulsion. Thus, injecting a coagulant containing positive metal ions to artificially neutralize the surface charge of the particles then the repulsion between the neutralized particles decreases, forming enough flux to allow sedimentation by gravity. The mixing and coagulation process can be divided into a mixing process that injects positive ion inorganic coagulation agents and spreads them evenly through rapid agitation. Thus, negatively charged colloidal materials become interconnected microflux. 
a coagulation and flocculation process that induces collisions between microflocks with suitable agitation strength and grows them to a proper size for sedimentation. In the mixing process, it is important to select an appropriate coagulant considering the raw water quality, such as water temperature, pH, alkalinity, and turbidity. And it is also important to rapidly stir it after injecting the chemicals with the optimal injection rate. One of the most commonly used coagulation agents is polyaluminum chloride. The coagulation efficiency is maximized over the proper pH range. Therefore, additional coagulation aids such as sodium hydroxide and calcium hydroxide can be injected to replenish alkalinity and adjust pH balance. To determine the optimal injection rate, a jar test commonly is used to simulate actual mixing, coagulation, and sedimentation processes. For rapid mixing, there are four methods such as mechanical mixing, hydraulic mixing, inline, pressurized water diffusing mixing. The main features of each method are as follows. The process follows this approach. In this process, fine flocks are combined to promote precipitation, forming large flocks. It is advisable to adopt the tapered flocculation method in which intensive mixing is applied in the early stage when flock particles are small, and mixing strength is gradually decreased as flocks grow significantly. The mixing strength is expressed as a velocity gradient, G value, as an indicator of the mixing speed and the strength of the power. If the G value is too small, the flock growth will slow down. If it is too large, the flock fracture by shearing force will interfere with the flock growth. Thus, it is necessary to set a proper range for each phase of the coagulation. Among mechanical type and water baffled mixing type, the commonly used one is mechanical method. The table shows the main features and structures of each method. The sedimentation process consists of sinking and separating most of the large and heavy flocks obtained in the previous process. This process has three functions of water treatment, buffering, sedimentation, and sludge discharge. Buffering is a function that reduces the burden of the next process by stably removing turbid substances despite changes in raw water quality. Sedimentation removes the large flocks created in the previous process by gravity. The most basic indicator of sedimentation efficiency is the surface loading rate. This rate represents the minimum settling velocity of particles. Flocks with a settling rate greater than the surface load rate can be removed by 100% during the sedimentation process. Smaller particles cannot be removed in the sedimentation process but are removed in the next filtration process. To effectively remove the flock, it needs to increase the settling rate of the flock along with the settling area. For this, multi-layered basins or inclined plates are used. Sludge is formed when flocks formed during the mixing coagulation process settle by gravity. The sludge is removed and transferred to a discharge system for treatment. Generally, a sludge collector is installed at the bottom of the settling basin and is used to remove sludge. If the sludge is not discharged properly, sedimentation cannot be performed properly. This process is very important. Filtration is the final step to remove the fine turbid matters that have not been removed from the previous process by passing water through the sand and other filter media. This process can ensure the safety and hygiene of tap water by not only removing micrometer-sized bacteria, but also removing turbid substances which contain microorganisms. This process is divided into slow filtration and rapid filtration. Slow filtration removes impurities at a slow rate using fine sand. In this method, impurities such as microorganisms, soluble substances, and suspended substances are filtered out by a layer of sand. Also, impurities are removed by biofilms that live on the sand surface with a process of absorption, oxidation, and decomposition. Rapid sand filtration is using a coagulant to turn colloids into flocks and filter them at a relatively high rate. Such process is mainly used in large water treatment systems. At this time, coagulant must be injected. 
Otherwise, natural particles with negative charges in the water pass through without being attached to the media. Rapid filtration process captures microflocks in the filter layer by sieving, sedimentation, collision, blocking, attachment, and coagulation to produce clean, filtered water. Sieving is important for the direct filtration. As the size of the particles is larger than that of the filter media air gap, the particles can be captured and removed. In areas with low flow velocity, some particles are removed by sedimentation, and others collide with the filter media and attach to the surface. Particles very close to the filter media come into contact with it and are blocked and captured. Flock particles close to the filter media surface are attached and captured by the coagulation, chemical coherence and physical force between the particles and the filter media. If turbid matters are slowly captured due to repeated filtration, the accumulated particles are removed through periodic backwashing. The rapid filtration basin consists of a filter media, a lower catchment, a backwash unit, and a flow controller. The features of each unit are shown in the table. Disinfection is the process of inactivating pathogenic microorganisms with disinfectants to meet water quality standards. It is not equal to sterilization that completely kills germs. Although the previous process removed a lot of micrometer-sized bacteria and nanometer-sized viruses, we cannot guarantee 100% safety from pathogenic microorganisms. And there is a possibility of regrowth of bacteria during the distribution process. Thus, disinfection is required at the last stage. In this process, chlorine, chloramine, ozone, and chlorine dioxide are used. Chlorine is mainly used in large-scale water purification plants because of its excellent sterilizing effect and low cost. In addition to the concentration of the disinfectant, it is important to increase the contact time with water. The production of the two values multiplied by each other is called disinfection performance. In order to increase the contact time between the disinfectant and water, it is recommended to increase the volume of a clean well or service reservoir, or to keep the water level high. We have studied conventional water treatment processes consisting of mixing, coagulation, sedimentation, filtration, and disinfection for tap water production. Thank you.